don't know if anyone else has ever felt this way, um, but I live in a world that is separated, in a country that is separated between whether you're Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, um, and that is great for democracy and all that, but I feel like it has become... Like, you have to be one or the other. And you have to, like, fully ride or die with one of them. And I'm just, you know, I'm not that kind of person. Um, So, I don't actually know whether or not people would generally believe that I am a liberal. Or if they would generally believe that I am a conservative. Um, So, I'm going to take a test online. (laughs) And I figured, you know, we'll go through this very controversial topic together. And, um, you know, I only have, like, what, 20-something subscribers? It's a little early on to get canceled, but you know what? Go big or go home, I think. Um, anyway, so let's do this. Okay. I'm going to have to try to keep this nice and short because I feel like I don't know how many questions there are. Um, and I don't want this video to be eight hours long. So, question one of 16. That's not too bad. Okay, if you had to choose, would you rather have... Wait, hold on. Are you a faith and flag conservative, progressive left, or somewhere in between? Well, let's find out together. Okay, anyway. If you had to choose, would you rather have a smaller government providing fewer services or a bigger government providing more services? Here's the thing. I don't think that the size of the government needs to change. However, because I grew up in a very poor family... Obviously, I have things now that I would have never dreamed of, like, 10 years ago. However, however, um, I would say that we're still, like, not over the poverty line. We're, like, able to see it now. But, um, anyway, I just feel like people below the poverty line really do need a little bit more help. However, there are a lot of different things. So, I'm going to say modestly expand. Anyway, we took a whole minute to answer one question. That, that's fun. Okay. Which of the following statements comes closer to your point of view? America's openness to people from all over the world is essential to who we are as a nation. Or, if America is too open to people from all over the world, we risk losing our identity as a nation. Okay, I'm going to say right now. I know we're probably not really supposed to use this uh, term anymore. But... America has and always will be a melting pot. I don't know what else to call it. But that's, you know, what I learned from a very young age. Um, And I just think that that is our identity, is to be a free, powerful country. Um, And why wouldn't we want to share that with people who do not have the same liberties, who do not have a choice of where they were born? Um, because I don't know about you, but I did not choose to be born here, but I'm here and other people, you know, they didn't choose to be born there, but they need, they need help too. Okay. Maybe not. Oh, we're doing a minute per question. That's going to be like 16 minutes. Okay. Here we go. In general, would you say the experts who study a subject for many years are usually better at making good policy decisions on a subject? other than other people or usually worse or neither you know better or worse i'm gonna say hmm, i'm gonna say neither better nor worse here's here's why here is why also i have covid so my voice will be you know going through it but anyway here's why i'm gonna say that um because sometimes you study a subject for many years because you are not already well versed on said subject but if you already are well versed on it and you did not have to spend many, you know, some people just know things better. So I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Thinking about it. Inc- um, <laughs> I don't really know anything about this. man. Okay. Here's the thing. How much more, if anything, needs to be done to ensure equal rights for all Americans, regardless on their racial or ethnic backgrounds? I pulled up a thing here really quickly. Um, here's the thing. Equality. We do have equality over gender, over race, we all have a quality. We are all able to do the same thing. Did I just turn off my mic? Can you still hear me here? Okay. Anyway, um, but, oh, 
oh, I don't know what I just did. I don't know what I just did. But anyway, but equity, however, we do not have. So I'm going to say a lot because, um, I don't know. What's the yellow and the revolt because they are fundamentally biased and some racial and ethnic groups? While there are many nothing necessary changes can be made by working within the current systems. Mm, I'd say current systems. You know, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, sue me if you'd like to see me, but I'm actually quite poor, so don't do that. But I, I just think they, you know, they don't make a fair amount. They make a lot, you know what I mean? It just seems ridiculous to think otherwise on that subject matter. I don't know why I'm doing an accent, but you know what? It's very bad. Here's another reason why I think I'm just 50-50 in general. Because I don't care if you are Republican or if you are Democrat, liberal, conservative. I don't care. Um, as long as you're a good person, I'm cool. Uh, so, anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> which of the following statements best describes your opinion of the United States? Uh, the United States stands above all other countries in the world. The United States is one of the greatest countries in the world, along with some others. There are other countries that are better than the United States. I would say, I would say there probably is other countries in the United States, or other countries that are better than the United States. However, I'm gonna go middle option. Seems pretty safe. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, people being too easily offended by things other people say. I am sorry to everybody who is going to. Hate me once I answer this question. It is a major problem. It is creating too much chaos. And um, we already have enough of that already. But also, people saying things that are offensive to others. Sorry, very offensive to others. <coughs> it's also quite a problem. And I don't think... Yeah, this is an this is a difficult one to answer because I feel like it is less than a major problem but more than a minor problem. So I'm I'm you know not able to make the decision. I'm really conflicted here. I think we're just gonna have to say it's a minor problem because I feel like what people think is very offensive nowadays, um, in my day and age, being nineteen years old. And I know, I know that I can be overdramatic, so I feel like it's only fair. Okay, which comes closer to the point of, uh, I'm going to try reading that once more. Uh, which comes closer to your point of view of candidates for political office? Okay, um, here's the thing. I don't know, because I don't usually feel like anything. You see here, right here, in the, I usually feel like, I don't usually feel like anything because I've never voted for anything ever in my life except for like school projects. Um, but like as an adult deciding who is the president, 2024 is the first um, uh, election year I will have experienced as an adult. I am 19 years old. I just turned 19. And, um, and I don't do any of the little once because i just don't know too much about it so i'm gonna have hope that when i decide to do it that there's always going to be at least one candidate who shares most of my views but who knows never experienced it um in general how much do white people benefit from advantages in the society that black people do not have okay first of all i love i love that it it literally only says black people. It does not mention all of the other minorities, um, such as Mexican people, uh, Arabic people, um, you know, all of the other people who also... Anyway, I would say that we, we benefit a fair amount. 
but I'm blind to it. Um, anyway, do you think greater social acceptance of people who are transgender is very good for society, somewhat good for society, neither good nor bad for society, somewhat bad for society, or very bad for society? Here, here's my thing, darling. I'm gonna go somewhat bad. The reason why, the reason why I support the LGBTQ plus community and that LGBT plus community um, includes transgender people and here is why I say somewhat bad for society it is not that they are like a group of people who are just out for your children no darling no um, I just think that simply it has gone to a point where I have seen so many stories of young impressionable children who are um, you know, seeing this on TikTok and wanting to be put on puberty blockers and, um, other things like that. And I just think that they should wait to be doing anything to their body, such as puberty blockers or, um, you know, any medical things in general should be until they're at least 18. And I've seen so many young, young children on the internet. Um, and it just kind of, it, it scares me because I know that when I was five years old to eight years old, even, you know, last month, I was not making very, very healthy choices. And I, I just cannot imagine, you know, deciding something for your entire life when you're that young. I just, so, because it is going to affect you. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, moving on. Overall, would you say that people who are convicted of crimes in this country serve too much time in prison, too little time in prison, just the right amount of time in prison? <sighs> um, I feel like, I feel like this is a hard one to answer. I'm going to say too much, and I'm going to say too, I'm going to say too little time, because here's the thing, people who are in there for drugs, too much time. People who are in there for murder and rape and, you know, all the other terrible things, I feel like they'd spend too little time. I, I just know that I have personally um, seen things on, you know, the television where a drug addict will spend 10 plus years in prison, but a rapist will spend less than five. So, anyway... Which of the following statements comes closer to the point of view? Religion should be kept separate from government policies, or government policy should be should should should, should support religious values and beliefs. Here's the thing: all the Christians who are getting mad at me for the one that I clicked, um, I'm also a Christian, but I just think that you have to think from like a bigger picture here, because if they if we combined religion and state, um, it would mean that all of the different religious beliefs would have to be involved. So not just Christianity, but also Hindu and also Buddhism and also paganism and also like all of that. And you know what? Everyone could do that in their own time. But I feel like the Things should not be like, well, it's against my religion, so nobody should do it ever. But then someone else could say the same thing, and you absolutely disagree with them. So, anywho, in the future, do you think U.S. policies should try to keep it so America is the only military superpower, or it would be acceptable for another country to become as military powerful, militarily powerful as the United States? I think this one would just scare me, but... If I am living in another country, what would I say? You know what I mean? I'm scared of this happening, but I feel like it would have to be acceptable for trying to be fair. But but just because I'm a scaredy cat, I'm going to say this one. All right? Because I don't want to live through a ward. Ah! <laughs> I am stressed sideliners along with 15% of the public directly right in the middle my friends my family 
anybody who chooses to watch this. I feel like that is very true. I am one stressed sign lighter. Um, so now you know. <laughs> Even the political topology quiz did not know where to place me except in the middle. So what should I vote for for the candidacy of the United States? Ah! Anyway. That is all. I had to use every bit of energy to make this video. So I hope you give this video a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. This one is going to get me canceled. So I don't know if you'll ever see me ever again, actually. So goodbye.